Muslims. And this is text three and text number four. Natasmai pravanam strotam Chakre sattva pariksaya Tasmai chukroda bhagavan Prajvalan swena tejasa Natasmai pravanam sotram Chakra sattva pariksaya Tasmai chukroda bhagavan Prajvalan swena tejasa Natasmai pravanam strotam Chakre sattvam pariksaya Tasmai chukroda bhagavan Prajvalan swena tejasa Ladies. Na, not, tasmai, to him, Brahma, pravanam, bowing down, strotram, recitation of prayers, chakra, made, sattva, his situation into the mode of goodness, pariksaya, with the aim of testing Tasmai at him, Chukroda became angry. Bhagavan, the Lord, Prajwalan, becoming inflamed, Swena, with his own Tejasa, passion. Hmm. Translation. So this is. Brigamuni, he's coming to greet his father, Lord Brahma. This is part of a program of testing to see the sages have assembled in this holy place to discuss and to conclude from that discussion who is the actual Supreme Personality of Godhead among the three 
principal deities, Brahma, Vishnu, or Shiva. So in order to come to some, what we say, conclusion, or what we say, realized conclusion, they choose Brigham Muti to make the test. So here he is beginning his test. And he goes to see his father, Lord Brahma. So it says, to test how well Lord Brahma was situated in the mode of goodness, Brigu failed to bow down to him or glorify him with prayers. The Lord became angry at him and flamed into fury by his own passion. Translation for text number four. Though anger toward his son was now rising within his heart, Lord Brahma was able to subdue it by applying his intelligence in the same way that fire is extinguished by its own product, water. <laughs> Purport. Lord Brahma is sometimes affected by his contact with the mode of passion. But because he is Adikavi, the first and foremost learned scholar in the universe, when anger begins to disturb his mind, he can control it by means of discriminating self-examination. In this instance, he reminded himself that Brigha was his son. Thus, in this verse, Sukadeva Goswami draws the analogy that Brahman's own expansion, his son, served to put out his anger, just as water, which had originally evolved from the element of fire in the primeval creation, puts out a fire. <laughs> Om Agyan Timirandasya Gina Jina Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stab Titam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adhaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gauda Bhaktivin Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So Brahma becomes the object of the first, what we say, examination of the three main principal deities. And we see here that this was obviously of offense by uh, Bhrigu Muni to respect others, to honor seniors, especially one's father, one's spiritual master, and those who are one's teachers, is considered culture, etiquette, and proper, what we say, behavior, <laughs> in all sense of the word. And therefore, failing to do that, he was, he was, he transgressed religious principles. But he did that purposely, just to see what would be the reaction from Brahma. This was the test. Brahma, as is mentioned here, he's in charge of the mode of passion. Or he's in, he uses the mode of passion for the creative energy. And therefore, that energy is very difficult to control. But Brahma is very powerful, he has great intelligence. But sometimes, even though he is, has such great intelligence and he's guided in his service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it appears, we could use the word it appears, he becomes affected by this element of anger or this principle of anger. And in doing so, it says in this verse that his anger was inflamed with fury. It wasn't just like a little bit of disturbance. It was quite intense <laughs> because Brahma, whatever he does is on a high level <laughs> his intelligence is big his anger is big his creation creative potency is also quite big so we can't just imagine what kind of anger that was but it was like a like a fury or like a raging fire but as, a, as water puts out a fire, and water is produced also from fire in the creative energy, as the different elements expand themselves into their different positions with, as distinct from previous elements, um, water is produced from fire as, as, the, as the universal creation unfolds. And Brahma, he's involved with that directly. So here it says that he checks his anger. <laughs> 
he checks his anger. And that water was his son. But now you might say, well, he did good. <laughs> he got angry. What was his anger? It was kind of righteous in one sense. And his son was meant to show respect to his father. And, all. and his father, in that sense, is respectable. If someone is not respectable, but is in a position of respect, sometimes when we don't show respect, it's not an offense because the person is not a, what we say, exemplifying the position that they hold. And so a sense of lack of respect may also be there just by the contact with the person who is not respectable, although in a respectable position. But in this case, Brahma is both respectable and so is his, his position. <laughs> And so, in this case, he uh, apparently is being incriminated for, not, for just waxing a little anger, but the, waxing anger and at the same time checking it, like that. So it is explained, now, can we say that Brahma's anger was material? Was he? Sometimes we see that in a, in a sense that if a person has a responsibility to um, help others learn and grow, they may use anger as a means for teaching. They may use that anger as a means for teaching. But in this case, Brahma was affected. It wasn't like he was just using that, that anger as a teaching. He was actually affected. And therefore, that was noted by Brigham Muni. And how, but the fact that he checked it was what we say, in one sense, his good quality. So we see a mixture of anger, but a checking of anger at the same time. When anger is not checked, as Krishna says, Kama Esha, Krota Esha, Rajaguna, Samudbhava, Mahashapnam, Mahapapa, Vidyeha Vihavari Nam, then that anger is the all devouring enemy of the world, which destroys everything. <laughs> um, when anger becomes unchecked and it's in, in connected with the mode of passion, it turns into what we say wrath, and that, that's an intensified element of anger. And then one may do anything or say anything and cause others to become angry also by that anger. <laughs> So that's, Krishna makes that point. Uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaks a little bit about this in one of his writings where he explains the six enemies of the mind. Kama, Kroda, Lobha, Moham, Madha, and Matsarya. Mm -hmm. Lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, and envy. And these are called, they're called robbers or sometimes, to use a more general term, highwaymen. They stay on the highway of, the, of bhakti and they look for persons who are on that highway and what do they do? They rob their treasure. What is that treasure? Bhakti. <laughs> the bhakti within the heart. So it is explained that these six highwaymen, which are enemies of the aspiring devotee on the path of pure devotional service, are, must be, what we say, ultimately checked and then ultimately eliminated. Now anger, what is anger? Anger is the frustration of a desire. <laughs> when a particular desire is not fulfilled, one may become angry. Sometimes one also turns that anger inward and becomes angry at oneself. <laughs> or may, may become angry at the situation. But in any case, it is a desire that is unfulfilled. <laughs> or an element of that unfulfilledness that comes in the form of lashing out or re responding to the situation in a negative way. Of course, there is righteous anger, we can speak about that also. That anger that is transcendental, and that anger is that when um, a devotee, one who is engaged in devotional service, sees or experiences the Lord being blasphemed, or the spiritual master being minimized or, or 
blasphemed in any way. In other words, if someone is acting against great souls in a, what we say, a materialistic way, then one may become angry. And Krota Bhakta, Prabhupada uses that word. So it's that element of anger is not always what we say negative. It can be used in devotional service. Prabhupada said lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, but matsarya, envy, he says, that has to be eliminated. That cannot be dovetailed in devotional service. Lust by working hard for Krishna. <laughs> and using one's energy, time, mental powers to spread Krishna consciousness and to engage in activities of devotional service. Lust, what is lust? Lust is the transformation of the actual love of the living entity for Krishna. <laughs> that energy cannot be, what we say, eliminated because it's natural. It's Ditya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadho Kabunoi Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kori E Udoi, that in the heart of all living beings, love, and love is a powerful energy. It's the most powerful energy. It's, gear, it's driven by the, the expression of pure emotion. But when that same emotional energy comes in contact with the material energy, in the, either one of the three modes of material nature, it manifests itself differently. Either destructive, selfish, or um, let's say, in the mode of goodness, it is more like seeing, in other words, putting oneself forward in a pious and religious way. <laughs> that element is still there. So, but that element is the nature of the soul, but it becomes negative or material in association with the modes of material nature accordingly. So wherever there is lust, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, there's anger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because sometimes when lust is not fulfilled, anger manifests itself like that. Greed, illusion, illusion in the sense, ident misidentification with the self, with this material body. To think I'm different than Krishna in the sense that I am something material. Any identification with the material body, and even the this, this sense of what we say, um, identifying oneself as a doer, that, that's, that same element of what we say, identification is the principle of Mohan or illusion. <laughs> so all these elements, but, and pride, what is pride? Pride means to take credit for something some activity, or to give oneself credit, or to act in such a way as to look for honor, profit, distinction. In other words, these things. I was just reading yesterday, I was at the house of one of, uh, I was in Dorkadish Prabhu's house. You know, I had, had to go to the hospital yesterday for some medical tri treatment. and. Uh, on the wall was a statement written by His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj, spoken, and then it was written down as a plaque. And it says that, I can't remember the exact statement, but the, the, element, the essence of the statement was that uh, we, the idea is to give up all attachments to anything in this world, but at the same time, I also, also want to give up the pride of being a renunciate. <laughs> so one gives up, or when we say naturally relinquishes all the distinctions, honor, prestige, and attention that comes by way of one's success in bhakti. And then the element of pride can come in. Oh, I'm such a great yogi, I'm such a great... Vishramurti Muni was an example of that. He was performing tremendous austerities. The austerities of Vishramurti Muni was as described, and he would sit in the middle of fires in the, in the summertime, all around him in seven different directions, and he would meditate. No one could do that. 
a blazing hot summer with fires all around, and in the winter time immersing himself into ice cold water and meditating and not being disturbed. But he was proud. <laughs> he became proud of the success of his austerities. And as soon as that pride entered in, uh, Indra took the opportunity to uh, take advantage of his, what we say, uh, wrong mentality and sent a beautiful society girl named Manika. And simply by her presence, the aroma of her, her, her body and the tinkling of her ankle bells, everything went, <laughs> even his pride. <laughs> So this is an example of that one who becomes successful in the process of devotional service. That element is there. And Srila Raghunath Das Goswami explains that, that we can get rid of these other things, lust, anger, illusion, greed, so many things. But then the pride that comes with the success of execution bhakti can also be an attachment and cause one to, what we say, fall short of the goal. Like that. So these different, what we say, enemies of the conditioned soul and what we must all say, enemies of the aspiring bhakti, bhakta, have to be eliminated. And of course, matsarya, Prabhupada said, that has to go completely, envy. There's a statement, and Prabhupada makes very sweeping statements, which are somewhat generalizations, but actually they're not uh, what we say hyperboles or what we say exaggerations. He said one man was asked to go to one village and see how many thieves he could find in the village. So in the village, after examining and very carefully understanding he found that everybody in the village was a thief. <laughs> and then Prabhupada said, yes, if you examine everyone in this material world, they're all envious of Krishna. <laughs> everyone. Of course, the devotees on the path of devotional service were freeing ourselves from that element. But the materialists, no matter how nice their material situation are, and even how, how much they execute pious activities. Still that enemy of me, that, that element of me first, or it's about me, becomes the element of focus. And therefore it's very difficult to actually come to the stage of complete selflessness in devotional service. That can be done by the association of great souls and by carefully executing the process. And understanding the futility of all these, ne these elements that somewhere are like marginal. They can be in the realm of bhakti as we execution, or we see them every day in the realm of the materialistic activities. So one has to be, so Brahma, such a great personality, such a high position, such great intelligence, still he became angry like that. But he, is, is he to be faulted for that anger? When that, that the example is also given in another pastime where Lord Brahma, when it appears that he becomes lusty after his own daughter. Brahma, he creates, or he put, Krishna creates the elements and empowers Brahma to, to, to arrange those elements in such a way to bring about all the forms within the material existence. And now he's being attracted by one of those forms. <laughs> and, and apparently, not only attractive, he actually pursues that desire in a positive way. And of course he had to give up that body. But Prabhupada says that anybody who finds fault with Lord Brahma becomes condemned, becomes what we say vilified. In other words, they also become in, implicated by sinful activity like that. So how do you balance that? <laughs> Such a great personality. 
But at the same time, Prabhupada said we should see that what they are they're, they're doing is to teach us that no matter how great you are or how powerful you are or how many times you have successfully overcome the allurements and the distractions of material energy, it's not over yet. <laughs> Only when one becomes, what we say, the highest stage of bhakti, in, in bhakti there are nine stages, uh, adhastrata, sadhu sangha, bhajana kriya, anartha nivritti, nishta ruchi, ashakti, bhava, and prema, the nine stages of devotional service. In the ninth stage, prema, it is says that even on that stage, one can fall down. <laughs> on the beginning stages of prema. I mean, that's really quite a strong statement. So how is that explained? Uh, actually, Bhakti Thakur, and then also Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, in his commentary on this verse, which is Rupa Goswami's statement in the Nectar Devotion, describing these nine stages, explains that only when one sees Krishna face to face can one be, what we say, situated uh, in a situ uh, where one will never again fall down under any circumstance. All the other stages, there's still, there's that element of aparad. Although free from lust, anger, greed, and all the, and even pride, still on, on the highest stage, one can commit aparad. There's that story of, I believe his name was Rupa Raghunath. Rupa Kaviraj, thank you. Rupa Kaviraj. Such a great personality, was known for his, you know, Pravachan could speak on the scriptures, could elaborate verses on the scriptures, could speak in such, what we say, in-depth ways, and attracted so many people to hear his, his talks. One day, one great soul, what was her name? She was a great, great personality. Does anybody remember? I thought that's what I was thinking, Hemalata Takarani. She came and she sat in his lecture. And she sat quietly towards the back. But she, she was so, what we say, absorbed in chanting the holy name that she could not stop. So even while she was listening to his lecture, she was chanting. <laughs> she was chanting Japa. He noticed that, although she wasn't disturbing, he still noticed that she was chanting while he was speaking. So he became very upset, offended, angry, what we say. I, I'm speaking and you're chanting and you're sitting here. And he started to find fault with her in a very, what we say, direct way amongst this gathering. She just remained quiet, peaceful, undisturbed and continued to chant. And he committed an offense, a very strong offense, because he criticized her very strongly. And then later on, his devotional service was, what we say, checked. And then he fell down from his exalted position. Now, there's another example that even in the higher stages that one can somehow still have that element of wanting respect, wanting honor, wanting, wanting pride. It seems like this is what happens with Lord Rama here. He is in a position of being respected and the relationship is one of, of, of uh, accepting respect from his subordinate. But yet, it was a transgression. It was a transgression. And Brigham noted that. And Brahma, what we say, checked his anger, but still he became angry like that. So we see that mm -hmm. as we progress in devotional service, uh, the material energy becomes more and more subtle and more and more what we say, uh, subtle in attracting or distracting the mind from what we say pure devotional service. 
So one should carefully execute devotional service and at the same time be very conscious not to fall victim of these elements by keeping the mind always on Krishna. Yena kena krupa reina krishna mana krishna nivesa yet. Somehow or other, remember Krishna. <laughs> Somehow or other. Or become absorbed in of devotional service to Krishna. Because if you're not absorbed in devotional service to Krishna, or you're not remembering Krishna, then that element of maya is always available to somehow distract one's mind attention. Um, so therefore, the path of devotional service as Srila Bhakti Vinod, and I'm sorry, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, is strewn with thorns. <laughs> He uses the word strewn with thorns. In other words, there is always danger on the path. So how to overcome that? Good association and um, careful chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. And understanding one's position. Like I was just thinking yesterday, like sometimes we struggle in order to arrange things in, in our life in such a way that things are better. Like, like we want something a little nicer. We're thinking, oh, it'll be help. I can execute devotional service better if I can just get that. I can get this situation, if I can arrange this, if I can be free from that. And I was just thinking, the more I try to do that, the more complicated it gets. <laughs> I said, I, I've been trying that for 45 years, and I'm still trying it. <laughs> I think, let me just give it up and just think about, all right, just focus on, try to focus on devotional service in Krishna, and whatever arrangements come, that's it. Does that sound okay? It's philosophically logical, but is it practical? <laughs> Sometimes a little bit of arrangement is needed, but not on a personal level, but on a devotional level. In other words, in order to make devotional service ha happen. But by focusing mostly on devotional service, chanting of the holy name, remembering Krishna, praying to Krishna, absorbing ourselves in those activities. And then material energy, what we say by Krishna's arrangements, becomes what we say subservient or supportive of one in devotional service. So devotional service is a very subtle <laughs> process of keeping the mind on devotion. And can we blame Brahma? I mean, this, this verse really is quite interesting. I mean, this whole situation is interesting. Sometimes we see that in order to instruct a subordinate, anger is used. You, can we say Brahma did that in this particular verse? Was he trying to instruct his son that you're not behaving properly? Yeah, doesn't seem like it, no. Seems like he's just a little bit disturbed that he wants respect and his son is supposed to give respect being his subordinate and his son. And he was annoyed by that. But as water puts out fire, he was able to check it. So it wasn't so severe. It, wasn't, it was an offense in the mind. As, the, as this particular pastime unfolds, he goes to Shiva, and then eventually he goes to Lord Vishnu, mm -hmm. like that. And each of the time, the offense becomes greater. It becomes further, it becomes in the mind, and becomes in speech, and then it becomes corporal, bodily offense, which is the most severe. Mm -hmm. And so, so we can learn just how subtle these, what we say, enemies, 
of the soul, lust, anger, greed, pride, illusion, and ultimately envy. How subtle they can be, so subtle that we cannot even see them sometimes, even hard to detect. That's why in the association of devotees, it becomes more, you become more of a mirror for yourself. When you're association, you can start to see your own, what we say, limitations. Your, you can see how you react and interact with others. And then you can see if you're not up to the standard. That's why association with devotee is more like a, a litmus test for one's own, what we say, qualities and what we say, abilities. It's so important to keep association with devotees. Okay, so I'll stop here. Any questions or comments? Lord Brahma, anger. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Yeah.